Pie dough is a staple recipe in both professional and home kitchens. But for some, it can be daunting. But fear not, I'm here to help. I will show you the essential pie dough recipe. Pie dough really is the foundation to so many of the most popular recipes you find in a pastry kitchen. I start by using cake and pastry flour, two and a quarter cups. Cake and pastry flour keeps the pie crust tender, but also makes it a little denser than your typical pie dough, so it holds in the wet filling and crisps up beautifully. I've got two tablespoons of sugar and three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. You should always sift your cake and pastry flour. It is ground a little more finely than all purpose. It has less protein to it, and that's part of what lends tenderness to a good pie dough recipe. I'll get this on. You can mix this pie dough recipe by hand using a pastry cutter. What does count is that you use ice cold butter. I've got a cup of unsalted butter and I've cut it into pieces. I want the butter to break down into just little pieces, not mix completely into it. It's those little bits of butter that create the flakiness in a pie dough. You need to use your eyes as a guide so you know when the butter is cut in. Now I've got some rather large pieces here, but you're looking for a slightly more even consistency. So pieces more about this size will be perfect. So this needs another 20 seconds or so. Now, as I mix it, I'm going to ready six tablespoons of ice cold water and I'm adding a tablespoon of lemon juice to that. The lemon juice reacts with the other ingredients and really helps promote the flakiness in the pie dough. I always stop the mixer right before the dough really comes together. That way I can finish the job on a work surface by hand. I actually want to shape it into two logs for easier rolling of individual tarts. And so now that I've exercised the glutens in the flour, you have to give the dough time to rest so the dough will roll easily and bake into tender tarts. You should always roll your pie dough using all-purpose or bread flour to prevent the flour from absorbing too far into the pastry. I divide each log in half and then I cut each of those into three pieces. Now I've got pastry for each individual tart. Rolling the tarts individually keeps the butter cold and the rolling action to a limited amount. There we go. And I use just a large size cookie cutter for each individual tart. You don't grease the tin, but I give it a little sprinkle of flour and then you let the pie dough just fall into the shell pinch up the pie dough, press it into the shell so it goes right to the bottom. Got to make room for that gooey filling inside. So while I'm preparing the butter tart filling, I'll pop these in the fridge just to set the butter and let the proteins relax. A butter tart earns its name. It's not just about the butter that's in the pastry dough, it's about the butter that's in the filling. I start with a half a cup of butter, a full cup of packed dark brown sugar, I'm going to heat this on medium heat, stirring until it's melted and bubbling. Two eggs. In addition to that one cup of sugar, I add half a cup of pure maple syrup, liquid gold. That too ensures a butter tart that is gooey and runny. A teaspoon of vanilla extract and a quarter teaspoon of salt, a tablespoon of lemon juice. I'll just whisk this to combine. Mm. Just the smell of the melting brown sugar and butter makes you think butter tarts. Now that it's bubbling, I can whisk this in. And I whisk it just gently and by hand. It keeps it smooth and creamy. Pour this into a pitcher. And now I'll grab the chilled shells. So the shells are firm. And this is where, depending on who you're cooking for and what their tastes are, you can drop in a few toasted walnuts, raisins, leave them plain. But I'm putting in buttery, lightly toasted pecan pieces. And the toasting really makes the pecans sweeter. And then pour the filling right over top the pecans.
and these are ready for the oven. I've preheated the oven to 400 degrees, and that's to really set the pie crust first. Then I turn down the oven to 375 after the 10 minutes and let them go another 10 to 15 minutes. Oh! Smell those butter tarts. <gasps> Still bubbling. As it sets, you want to cool them before you take them out of the pan. I know it's hard. You have to wait. 